Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend on a great trading week last week. We had some pretty good setups on the watch list last week. If you want to go back and review that, get some educational value out of it, I recommend it. We had four great short setups that worked out pretty well. If you want to go back and review that, once again, I really recommend you, you know, to get some educational value out of that because there were some really nice setups there. So before we dive in here, we're going to go over the economic calendar. There's really not anything with too much crazy event risk compared to, you know, like the FOMC minutes last week. But Monday, we do have pending home sales. I would say this probably has the most chance for the market to move. That's at 10 a.m. So it'll be after the open. Tuesday, there's really not anything uh, important that's really going to move the market that much. Wednesday, we do have Kashkari speaking. He's a Fed speaker and also ISM manufacturing. That could move the market a little bit. Thursday, we have initial jobless claims and Governor Fed Waller speaking as well and Kashkari speaking again. But that's after hours at 6 p.m. And Fed Waller is actually at 4 p.m. So this is after, you know, this is pretty much right when the bell goes off. But I would say Thursday, initial jobless claims, that's going to be your market mover, if anything. People are going to want to get that hint into the labor market and see if there's any reduction that could maybe give a hint that you know the fed's policy is working and then friday we have ism services a couple more fed speakers i wouldn't really say these these ones are that important to be honest maybe michelle bowman so maybe you can get some relief this week knowing that there's not too much event risk when it comes to data release so let's go ahead and get into our setups here we're looking at rtx this is our first setup we're gonna be looking at calls on this and the reason for that is because we are testing this uptrend line you got test one test two test three to be a third test trend line support it's also making a reversal hammer here you can see a nice bullish candle coming right off of that and also holding the daily 50 ema so ideally, you know, this can see a move back up to, you know, probably about 101 or somewhere around there. As long as the trend line's holding, this looks really good to the upside. You can see that RTX did close flat relative to the indexes that closed down over 1%. So in a way, this is almost like a relative strength play, just based off the Friday close that it was able to remain flat despite market weakness. One thing you do have going against you here is the KDJ oscillator. You can see it's pointing down. And it's probably just from this little sell off at supply. Ideally, you do want to see this start crossing back up, you know, just to, you know, have that assurance that the momentum is starting to shift to the upside. But you are buying the dip on this and maybe getting a good price since it's right at the trend line. And also at the daily 50 EMA where a lot of other people are looking to buy the dip in an uptrend, which you can see RTX is in an uptrend. So yeah, RTX looking good here for upside. You just want to make sure it does hold that trend line. Otherwise, if it goes under, you know, say it just flushes, that would be your stop out area. That's where you'd want to set your stop loss. So yeah, looking at calls on RTX. Next, we're going into XLE here. So I like this for upside once again. One reason why is because same thing with RTX. You, you can see we have a relatively flat close on energy despite market weakness. I feel like that could be signaling a little bit of uh, relative strength as well as holding the 61.8 Fibonacci support that held as support three other different times. You can see a test one, a test two, a test three here as well. This is actually a fourth and fifth support test as well as testing this 200 e, uh 200 sma so this is the 200 simple moving average i, I switched to this one because i've noticed that the market's been reacting a little bit more to this one than the, the exponential moving average which would be the ema which we've used in previous videos so this simple moving average is working pretty good it's just got a different calculation but overall it's still you know just a moving average and this would be your longer term 200 period moving average and then your 50 uh, is still a regular EMA and this is just accounting for your you know your more medium slash midterm uh, trend but yeah like I said it's holding demand here pretty good which is also the 61.8 percent retracement support another good thing it has going for it is this gap above so eventually I feel like this could fill up if we go down to the shorter time frames here you can see it's forming multi bottoms on this hourly chart which looks really nice but your ideal confirmation is going to want to be over that 85.26. So you want to see a breakout of that first, maybe before, you know, catch an upside, probably break out back test and then, you know, maybe try to fill up the gap. And another thing with energy, this will depend on how the crude oil futures do. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. You will want to see that strength in crude oil and just the sector as a whole. Usually XLE, it's made up mostly of um, Exxon and CVX. Those are the two top weighted stocks inside the ETF. So if you want to keep an eye on that individually as well, those are also 
socks that will move just like the XLE. So that short term focus, the 8526 will be your level two break. If it can't get above that, uh, maybe just don't take the trade yet. So just use the 8526 as confirmation. I think that would be a good way to be patient and you know wait for that little small breakout in order to get back up to the gap. So yeah, pretty decent setup here. You'd be buying the dip. Ideally, this is kind of like a value area where it has been scooped up multiple times. You can see it's had pretty decent bounces in the past. So let's hope that I can hold up here. Uh, maybe have a maybe have a little dip on the open or something Monday. That way you can get a decent price and you're not overpaying. And if you do want to wait for that confirmation, like I said, on the 8526, that can maybe give you your trade up to the gap fill. So if you don't want to wait for a dip and you know you'd rather not buy on the dip just wait for the 8526 like i said and even if you wanted to you could just add alert and we'll name it breakout so yeah that's exit lead. looking at calls on this i really feel like you know this could be a good short eventually but i'd have to lose that 200 sma and also lose that 8260 61.8 fibonacci support so otherwise just focus to the upside on this and yeah just wait for that confirmation if you'd rather play safer next we're going into luvs this is southwest airlines this is purely a trend line play similar to adobe last week i feel like this can have pretty much go one or two ways it can hold up here monday and will open above the trend line and you know it can go higher or to be like adobe like you saw last week where we gap below the trend line and also gap below you know our key support slash resistance level which resulted in a huge move down by the way if you caught adobe and you did get your put trigger like i told you to which is by you know just setting an alert on the trend line that did trigger and it got killed on friday like down eight percent so if you i mean if you if you did a swing trade on that one you got paid massively on puts so we're going into the same mindset this week since you know the trend is kind of starting to shift to the downside a little bit i feel like there's a lot of algorithmic selling and a lot of you know quants and funds are starting to you know look for that momentum shift due to uncertainty in the markets and with the federal reserve so this week we're going to be doing the same thing we're going to be looking at calls or puts on this one your trigger is obviously going to be for puts if it goes under the trend line same thing as adobe is last week but if it opens up monday and it's holding this trend line nice and good that does give you you know your confirmation that it, it can go higher and start to retrace back up and another good thing about this for the bull is that this is a third trend line test so this would be test one test two test three test three is usually where the trend is going to validate so this could be good for bulls upside target probably just be this little pivot low right here from this candle It'll be a 34.13 and then you have another little pivot right there at 34.82 if it breaks the trend line you have a flush all the way down to 32.10 so those are your levels for luv like i said just make sure monday it's you know opening above the trend line like we're not gapping down or anything make sure it's holding a support maybe look for you know open session buying and something to support your thesis to the upside first before entering and likewise for puts you know just wait for that trend line to break that would be your confirmation for downside so this one can go either way you're pretty much just you know keeping keeping an open mind to the downside but also keeping your you know focus to the upside unless it gaps below that monday kind of like how adobe did last week so we can right click add alert to trend line if it wants to break down we can hit create and that will trigger so that's luv looking pretty good for either direction but you will have more of an upside bias here if it does open up above the trend line monday morning so just look out for that so next we're going into microsoft so i really like this one because there is two different ways to look at this we have the daily time frame here we're breaking the short term up uptrend you can see it's test one, test two, had a test three, but failed. And also, if we go down to the weekly, you can see it's starting to go back within the downtrend line. You can see a test one, test two, had a breakout, now going back within. Honestly, this could be double bearish on both time on both time frames. So going back to the daily here, obviously you can see it losing the 200 SMA on the daily, also losing the daily 50 EMA, which it closed under Friday pretty bad down day minus two percent obviously that's gonna have a huge impact on the indexes uh considering microsoft is a top way to name in both spy and qqq so another way if you don't want to trade the individual ticker obviously if you want to trade the spy or qqq that's gonna have that exposure to microsoft as well but i really like that this specifically is setting up this trend line break and we'll go into spy next or um, in a couple you know a couple minutes here spy is also breaking an uptrend line very similarly to Microsoft here. So ideal downside targets, just going to be this little demand zone here about, you know, 244, something like that. If you are bearish and you do want to see more downside, obviously you're just going to need to stay under the trend line. If it were to get back over the trend line, reclaim, that's going to invalidate your thesis. So I would just say that move back down to demand would be the most conservative and ideal price target. 
it's not too much lower if you got down here honestly on the on the lower time frames after this little sell-off right here that's going to be considered pretty oversold unless we had like you know some huge market moving event which this week we really don't there's really no data coming out that can move us too crazily but i feel like that could give you know markets a little bit of time to make a trend maybe it'll make more sense and there's not going to be this random coin toss on direction so you can see i mean microsoft going back within the one week downtrend line from all-time highs to current also breaking the short-term uptrend line so you do have a you know double trend line bearish thesis here which looks really good so we're gonna have puts on microsoft and this could honestly probably play into a spire qqq short as well considering that this individual ticker does have a huge weighting so just make sure it stays under the trend line and that's it next we're going into uber so similar to Microsoft, you see that it's breaking the uptrend. This is also breaking the uptrend. One thing I might not like about this so much is that it's down 3%. So I had a pretty big red day Friday. So if you really wanted to be safe here, make sure it gets under 3272 first. We'll right click, add alert, hit breakdown, create. So if you wanna wait for that to break first, that would be pretty much like your safety play, waiting for confirmation. Just make sure it goes under, break down, back test, and go lower. Another thing that could happen here, since it's still above the support, it could like have a fake out bounce, you know, back test, and then try to go lower first. A lot of times these type of patterns, when they're breaking the uptrend lines, they're not just gonna have a straight down flush. So I don't know if you saw Intel last week, that was a straight down flush. And I didn't mention, you know, it can go either way. It can bounce and back test, then go lower, or it can just have the straight flush. If you want to make sure that there's a straight flush play on this, maybe wait for that 3272 to get taken out first. If you wanted to wait for a bounce and get a better price, wait for that back test and look for a rejection on the uptrend line. So that's just two ways to look at it. Either way, it's breaking the uptrend line. So you do have to leave more bearish here until proven otherwise as well as be cautious at the support level here. So you don't want to be overly bare short term because it does have a chance to get bounced off this huge pivot. And you can see the candle it made right here up five, what does that say? 5.35% just on this one big candle right here from this little pivot low. So that's just something to keep in mind. You know, don't get overly bearish until it gets under that 32.72. So looking at puts on this, leaning to the downside, but also remaining cautious at support. And that's for Uber. Next, we're going into the SPY. So this is the S&P 500. And like I said, with Microsoft, it did break the uptrend as well. And I think a big reason why I broke this uptrend was because of Microsoft. And I'm sure other tech looks pretty similar as well so one good thing spy does have going here it's got the 200 sma so holding the 200 sma had a nice base off that you can see also this 393.56 which comes from this pivot right here and even add an error for you so there's that 393.56 comes from this candle right here you can see holding up to the penny basically you know 393 56 this low was 393.64 from friday so for spy here just want to make sure it stays under the trend line just like microsoft and uber it might come up and try to back test and reject off the area before trying to go lower but as well the bears will need this 393.56 and the 200 sma to break as well under that, you do have a pretty much a straight flush zone back right down to 387.26. There's also a little rally base rally demand zone here. And it looks like that level meets up with about 389. So if it lost that 393.56, that does take you straight down to 389. And also the demand zone low of that is that 387.26, like I said. So I can't really put you much lower until it gets under that 387.26. But if it does lose that 393.50s, that will take you down to that level I was talking about. You do want to make sure it gets under the 200 SMA as well. You can see it's acted as support prior. It's acted as resistance before. You get a rejection here, rejection here, rejection here. You have a break over, acted as support here before taking off and now coming back to back test it right here and also making that base. You can see a little pretty decent volume too, finally above the average. So another good thing you do have going for a bear thesis here, it is having the KDJ cross to the downside. So oscillators are pointing negative. So if you do want to wait for that 393.50s to get taken down first, wait for that level, wait for the 200 SMA to break as well. And that will give you a bear trade down to the level I was talking about at demand, which is the 389s. If you're bullish here, you do need to reclaim the trend line, obviously. So that would just invalidate everybody's thesis that the trend line broke. And that will put you back on track, you know, to get back up you know above the 400s etc so it's really as simple as that this trend line is going to be huge to watch and also the 200 sma everybody's watching this 200 sma so just make sure you watch it carefully it looks like it's attempting to make support but keep in mind we did close down one percent so this could have a you know that down friday down monday scenario where we close down week and we have that weekend continuation going into monday but i feel like as long as we're holding this 200 sma I feel like the algos and retail traders and institutions, they're all going to, you know, think everything's handy dandy still. So just keep that in mind. Wait for that 200 SMA to break the 393.50s as well. I will give you a bear trade down 
and also kind of go hand in hand with the Microsoft trend line breaking down as well. Next, we're going into the QQQ. So QQQ is a little bit different. Right now it is at a demand zone. So it's holding the demand zone low. Also is holding a 50 EMA and 200 SMA confluence. So you have both moving averages in the same spot here, as well as, you know, price trying to bottom out and make it, you know, a base. If you go to the shorter time frames, you can see that algos other traders are coming in, you know, trying to make that bottom and hold this as support. Other than that, there is that little gap the, uh, from Friday. So the PCE data looked a little hot, kind of spooked people a little bit, and it did gap down pretty gnarly. So the bulls do have that going for them on SPY and QQQ. They have those gaps across the board. It could have a short-term attempt where it'll try to fill about half of it. Maybe it'll try to fill the whole thing. But otherwise, I feel like if it can't, you know, this can go lower. One level you do want to watch is just the demand zone low every single time. Also, these uh, moving averages, same thing. That 289.89 is the demand zone low. So if it loses that, loses the 50, loses the 200, that will definitely go lower. And this is all by imbalance area. So there's no demand until you get down here at about 276. So that could, that could take you super low. You have really nothing here. Maybe you have an argument, you know, for that 280 because you do have a strong, you know, wick support here. But otherwise, under that demand zone low, this could get nasty. So if you're bullish, just make sure this holds. I would say, you know, this maybe looks a little favorable for upside because it's holding that, you know, moving average confluence. You also have the, you know, demand zone low support as well as a decent volume, you know, above average here. But that's mostly probably sellers because we did gap down pretty heavy. So for QQQ here, looks more neutral, bearish, super bearish under this, you know, 289s. If it can get back over this 296.88, that'd be good for bulls. That is the support that pretty much broke and that's when things started to get a little ugly. So as soon as that 29. 296.88 level which comes from this you know high right here you can see the flush down did get heavy it did sell for a couple days but now it's in demand trying to hold up and you can see the strong wicks pushing upward so you do have an argument here that you know you have the two moving average confluences otherwise i mean it looks pretty neutral just wait for that demands on low to get taken out if you want to take puts calls just make sure you know maybe wait for that gap to start filling and once the gap starts filling you'll know that there's still a pretty decent amount of area you can fill up so that's one way to look at it so i'd say this looks neutral to me just wait for that demand zone low to get taken up iwm so this is kind of similar it's still holding the demand zone low also holding the daily 50 ema so buyers are still trying here it finally broke under this 189.56 which comes from this double top resistance right here it acted as new support over here flushed under that pretty hard and you can see once it got under that there was a pretty decent sell off to the downside but once it got into demand and you know near the moving average you can see why it keeps trying to hold up and you know those traders will come in and try to buy the dip so unless it, lo it loses this demand zone low similar to qqq i really can't put you much lower to be honest because we are still in demand so i can't really speculate that it's not going to bounce here but at the same time, I can't put you much lower. So hopefully that's not too confusing. Usually when you buy in demand, it's a, it, you're getting at a good price. So, I mean, this could be favorable to the bulls, to be honest, as well as you have that 50 EMA. And if this looks favorable, that could bring the indexes up a little bit. But otherwise, it looks neutral, same as the others. I really like more, like more of a individual ticker focus this week sticking day trades on the indexes you know just day trading the spy and qqq using camera pivots and traditional pivots get those good entries and you know be out by the end of the day if i do find a swing trade on the indexes like spy or qqq or iwm i will post you know i'll post about it in the discord or you know i'll I'll let you know if I got on the calls or puts or something like I have before. The last one I did was on QQQ and you know we had puts that worked out pretty good so I'll make sure to post that in here if I see something but right now on the indexes I really don't see anything too favorable. There's really no pattern or anything. The SPY probably looks the best because it has that fresh uptrend line break but that's about it. Next we're going into the VIX. Tuesday ended up opening up huge. It ended up gapping up. The VIX actually closed 14% that day which was totally unexpected because it was rejecting the 50 EMA Friday like I was showing you as well as just chopping in this range but overall you know we have been looking at this falling wedge breakout so I mean you kind of did kind of have to expect that you know little potential upside risk for the VIX thus bringing the market lower. One thing it had to do last week was just clear this 2194. You can see as soon as it got over the 2194, I mean, just crazy upside. Once it got back below 2194, you can see there's a pretty big flush day as well. But right now it's finally holding over the 50 EMA, which I thought was interesting because every time I get to the 50 EMA, I showed you last week, you got a rejection, 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 you got another rejection. And finally, you can see the little green here. That means price is finally getting over it. 
So I thought that was interesting. Uh, same thing as last week, pretty much. You do want to see it getting back over this 21.94, as well as you do have a new peak here at 23.63. And for the 2022 to 2023 average close, it did drop from 25.02 to 24.97 and the reason why it didn't drop about 10 or 11 cents this time is because it did close you know up in the you know 23s and also you know a little bit higher than it did last week so the average drop really wasn't that bad and it's starting to get closer to the mean so i've pretty much been calling for this mean regression all the way since down here eventually it always comes back to the mean volatility always comes back to average and it does gas premiums up and sometimes it brings stocks lower so this is pretty much expected but it has been a little bit choppier than I expected. I thought it'd be more of a, you know, a crazy breakout and it would just have, you know, volatility picking up super fast, to be honest, just because of the consolidation that it's been going through for a while. But I mean, not everything's straight up and down, so not surprising either. One thing the VIX does have going here, you got the KDJ crossing to the upside, so oscillators are starting to point up, momentum is shifting upward. But like I said, as long as it's holding over that 50 EMA, it does look favorable here, and that volatility could keep spiking. It needs to get over that 2194, like I said, and also has that new peak at 2363. If it gets over that 2363, you do have a good chance up to the actual average, which it hasn't tapped yet, but I think it will get up there. Once it gets up there, that's when you, you know, take a pause, see what the market does. If, it, if there's a hard rejection off the 200 and also the 2023 to 2023 average close, uh, you could start looking at calls, you know, because, you know, volatility is at its average and maybe it could have, you know, moved back down towards the supports at the lower areas. If it starts to break over, that's a good chance to start looking at puts because once it gets over violently, it starts having these crazy pops, that means volatility is back above average. And if volatility is above average, that means more spook. It means more spookiness. People are going to start selling. Algorithms might have programs to start selling. So that's why you just want to wait. Honestly, once it gets up there, once it actually gets up there, I mean, wait, because you do want to see that rejection or break over. That's all I meant by that. And you do want to see an extreme. You want to see an extreme, either a rejection, or you want to see an extreme to the upside. So you want to see if it's going to reject the average, or if it's going to get above average. So that's for the VIX. Like I said, just that 2194 and the 2363 is in focus. Right now, the psychological level is still 20. It's staying over that. So I consider this a little bit elevated on the short term for volatility. Next, we're going into DXY, so the US dollar. We've pretty much been watching this breakout for the past couple weeks. It broke out, finally got a big move. Also cleared that 104.66 peak. Now I got us maximum up to 105.63. So if it bases out here to get higher, I can put us as high as that for now. If it gets over that, I can put us at the 200 SMA. So the 105.63 just comes from this extreme price point here. You get that hard projection. Dollar closed down, you know, 1.2%. This is a pretty big day on the dollar where it sold off. That's why I think that's probably about as high as I can get for uh, for the short term before, you know, it can see some resistance. And maybe once the dollar cools down, that would bring stocks a little bit higher. So if it did get up there, honestly, you wouldn't want to be overly bearish if you started seeing a rejection up here. But at the same time, start looking for it if it's going to break out or not. You know, you, like I said, once you get up to resistance, you're going to be either looking for that extreme, you know, for a rejection or you're going to be looking for an extreme over the level. That's kind of like a waiting point, right? You don't want to get overly bearish and you don't want to get overly bullish either because you don't have your level confirmation yet. So if the dollar does start rejecting here, the bulls do have a good case. Lowest I can put the dollar if it starts rejecting, I can put it down to that 104.66, which just comes from this peak right here on this candle. So yeah, nothing too exciting. I feel like it already got the breakout. This kind of spooked stocks a little bit, started kind of bringing us back to reality a little bit. Now we just wait for it to get to this resistance. Or, you know, if it dips down to 104.66, you know, maybe currency traders will try to buy the dip there and try to spike back up. So we'll have to see. Just that 105.63 in focus, if it gets over that, that's 200 SMA. But overall, it is breaking out and also over our COVID 2020 peak at 102.99 or just, you know, 103 flat. So that's our video for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to tune into the next one. If you want to go back and watch the other ones, you will get some good educational value out of it. Maybe look at the calendar dates, see how the, uh, the setups played out. You know, if I said calls or puts, maybe see if there, there was upside or downside, see if it played out, see how you know probable it was and if it did pan out and you might get some educational value into patterns or supply and demand zones, support and resistance, moving averages, all the stuff that we use here. So I love you guys. Make sure to tune in the next one. Like, comment and subscribe to our X-Trades YouTube channel and I'm out.